But I'll tell you one part of the country that I honestly wouldn't complain about if uh, a local Aboriginal land corporation put in a big <laughs> land grab, and that's the entirety of the ACT, because they couldn't do a worse job than the ACT government is right now. Can you believe today they have changed the law so that 14-year-olds can change their gender and their name without parental permission. According to the government, they say 14 is an age where young people are generally becoming more mature and independent and can be assumed to have understanding of the consequences of a change of registered sex well, or given name. Now, I look forward to the ACT, therefore, allowing 14-year-olds mm -hmm. to drink. I look forward to them allowing 14-year-olds to smoke, allowing 14-year-olds to get tattoos, allowing 14-year-olds to go to war. Of course, they're not going to do that, are they? But when it comes to gender, no parental permission required. We know that this has been happening in schools, where schools have been allowed to allow students to trans uh, sorry, transition their gender without permission of parents. Now the state says at 14 years old, you can essentially break away uh, from the, uh, the influence of your parents and, and make up your own mind. Well, if they can do it for that, they can do it for anything. And the, uh, the Human Rights Minister in the ACT described this as, and I quote, an incredible achievement. Ooh. I mean, to describe uh, allowing 14-year-old kids to change their gender without parental consent as an incredible achievement makes you wonder how much lower they can go. But it's not only the ACT where this is happening. Last June, Queensland moved legislation to allow 12-year-olds mm. to change their gender on their birth certificate without parental consent. They can go through the children's court, provided they've seen a professional who will then guide them through without mum and dad's involvement. So this is an assault not just on young people who clearly are not mature enough to make a decision like that. As you mm. pointed out, they can't get a tattoo, they can't have a drink, they can't vote, they can't go to a nightclub, but they can change their gender. It's an assault on children. It's also an assault on parents who are rightfully responsible to guide their children's development. Uh, that's why you have parents when kids get confused so mum and dad can help them not make crazy mm. decisions. The government have said, no, 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 we will help kids make decisions that they'll probably regret for the rest of their lives. If there's a single parent left in our nation who isn't aware that the state wants your job and they're actually taking it right under your nose. I've made this point about daycare before. Mm. Every government in the country is like, universal free daycare, that's where we're going. Queensland announced it very recently. Hang on a minute. Why do you want me to hand over my very young children in their most formative age to you so me and my husband can go back to work and earn double the taxes instead of just one while you raise my kid for me? No, thank you. The state is doing this very very deliberately. And again, it's always done in the name of we know what's right yeah. for the child. Now, if you read a lot of these books that keep getting busted in libraries, school libraries, if you watch certain cartoons also, you'll notice this same narrative being told to kids over and over again. Only you know who you are. Don't let anybody else tell you. Only you know whether you're a boy or a girl. And with any number of issues, like what kind of clothes you want to wear, only you know who you really are. And, of course, no child does. They are a child. Their brains don't finish developing until they're well into their 20s. And a 14-year-old has the maturity of a dead pygmy. But what I find extraordinarily alarming about this is we saw this during also the pandemic when they were telling kids, if you are wanting to get vaccinated and your parents won't allow it, we'll allow it. And I thought to myself, oh, that's, that's no good. Mm. You're giving kids the right to make these medical decisions about their own bodies without parental consent. Now we've got this kind of gender-related stuff. And I do fear that where this is going is then to say, which would make perfect sense, OK, well, what else are people so young capable of doing? We've got people in this country pushing for them to be able to vote younger than 18. But where I'm really going with this is like, well, if you've got the, the maturity to decide what your gender is, what your identity is, whether you should get vaccinations or not, maybe you're old enough to choose whether it's your time to be sexually active. Right now, across the country, it is 16 
any younger than that, yeah. anybody else is in big trouble. And yet, they're very happy to teach kids all about sex and every single kind of it in these books that are being busted in libraries, in these certain channels that kids can discover online. We do expect Bose's on it all the time. Why are you filling their young minds with all of this gender stuff, all that sex-related information, if you don't expect them to then actually monkey see, monkey do? And I think the, the other problem is that if, if what you're trying to do, what they claim they're trying to do is create a you know, safer situation for these kids, I think it actually creates a situation with more grief for these kids. Because let's say, even if you were a parent who had no problem with your kid coming home and saying, I'm a girl, Girl, right, you've got mm -hmm. a boy who comes, I'm, comes home and says, I'm a girl. But if you've gone down to births, deaths and marriages and changed your gender on your birth certificate before you've told your parents, even if your parents would have been supportive of you, they'd be spitting chips that you've gone and done that yeah. without their support. It creates problems that need not even be there. I cannot see a way in which this ends up as a good thing for anyone. There's another issue here, and that is the, the some of the parliamentarians, they said that this legislation supports a person's human rights to express who they are. Mm. And when we're a Christian nation, we used to have this idea of uh, humanity as being fallen. That is, uh, you're born into sin. In other words, I never had to teach my kids to lie or throw tantrums. They just worked <laughs> that out all by themselves. Wow. I had to teach them to be good. But these days we believe kids are born almost perfect and society and the institutions, they corrupt them. And so we've got to protect these beautiful, perfect kids from the corruptive influence of their parents or other institutions. And that's a recipe for disaster. Parents are there to correct and direct their children's upbringing not to be hands-off and allow them to just do whatever they want because clearly they'll make all sorts of mistakes.